What up, y'all? I'm gonna do a little, uh, Dice Influence video for y'all. I'm not here to try to prove or disprove. Or I convince you guys. It's either, you either believe in it or you don't. And, it's what it's always gonna be. Um, sorry, I can't, let me get this adjusted. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you either believe it or you don't. I would say the word dice control is a little misleading. Um, it's more so dice influencing. Um, I'm going to go with the 5632. Or 50, 5632. And the reason I say that, uh, I'm also going to throw the unit grip. Um, a grip I quote unquote invented. Um, I've never seen anyone use it for stick right it's just a little throw the reason I call it the unit is because when you throw it right flies together as one hits and kind of breaks off but yeah I'm not gonna be the guy that changes your mind if you don't believe in it it is what it is um, you got a five four nine but yeah I mean it's it's definitely it's definitely a thing. I mean, you can do all the research you want on it. There's a reason guys like the Dominator, Don Larigio, and Frank Scobletti have gotten blacklisted, and there's a reason they changed tables. Um, we got a 516 from the average old hard table to the bouncy table. And the reason for that is that the Premier Group premier grip they used to throw the just pendulum back and forth throw was destroying them I mean not everyone can do it but the way they threw it they dropped it down at a 45 degree angle hit like two to eight inches from the wall and just kissed and would like roll over and that's the reason the tables are now bouncy or newer tables because they anything they can do to help randomize the dice is gonna work in their favor. So now you see all these new throws like this one I'm throwing now or the stack grip or whatever that help cancel out some of that bounce or the tor uh, the twister that when it lands, it lands on its side and spins instead of flips over and randomizes so much. But yeah, there's now it's just about finding a role that you can replicate your results. And you can find a role you can find a roll that you like a lot, and that's a 639 point covered. But, uh. Yeah, you can find a roll that works. You're hitting the same spot, and you keep seven and out, but you're replicating the results of hitting the same exact spot, getting the same numbers or same combination is seven when you seven out and all you got to do is adjust your dice um, to a different dice set or it could be so much as moving from that to that get the half sevens or that to the to that I mean use the hard way set I mean as long as you're hitting a spot you're negating some of the bounce and you're getting replicating results like you're seeing a lot of the same numbers pop up we got a 6-5 yo. Okay, the come out. That was a bad throw, by the way. They kissed and just flew all over the place. But yeah, if you're if you're hitting the same spot, I mean it's a lot like golf or, or basketball. I play a lot of both and have for years. You wanna have like a routine, you wanna have a, a spot you're aiming at. Um you want to be able to use the same mechanics every time, and if you're if you're using the same mechanics, hitting in the same spot, they're kissing off the same spot of the wall. I mean, you're going to see results that pop up more than more than statistics would say they should, and that's what you're trying to do. We got another five six yo back to back pay the come out roll. And that's what you're trying to do with this. Like I said, I'm not probably going to change anyone's mind, but I hope to expand people's mind a little bit. I've only been controlling or 
practicing this for a couple months. Um, I used to practice it on the same table before I turned it into a bouncy table, and I got pretty good. And I, I and then I'd get to the casino where in my area is all bouncy tables, and I'd be hitting my normal spots, and nothing was happening for me. We got a hard ten because I didn't have. I didn't have the same setup as the casino. Like I had a hard table, so I, the, my landing spot, which I was hitting at the casino, wasn't producing any of the same results as it was at my house. And that's because the dice were bouncing a lot more. I was landing them too close and they'd hit and come back because that bouncy tape, and I wasn't using a throw that negates, that was a bad throw by the way, that negates some of that bounce, we got a 5-4-9. Um, I, I released that one too late, so it came down from an arcing angle. With this uh, unit grip, I don't want that 45 degree drop because it gets that bounce like you saw. Once that bounce happens, they pretty much completely randomize. Um, but you want, I like a little more of a line drive on this throw and I'm throwing it into the hook because I don't mind them bouncing off a little like that. We got a six deuce, eight. But yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, people, if you don't practice this a lot, you're never gonna get any better at it. It's like, it's like anything. The more you practice, the more you're gonna see stuff popping up. You're gonna notice trends. You're gonna, you're gonna notice when you have a bad throw. Like if you've seen it, I've called twice where I didn't have something I liked. You're not gonna throw the throw you want every single time. Just like when you're shooting a free throw, you're not, you know when you instantly when you shoot it if you shot enough. That's long. That's short. Or when you're hitting a golf ball, the, the second you make contact, you can tell sometimes if you sliced it or if you pulled it or if you hit too far behind it, too too far in front of it. You instantly know. What you're trying to do is practice enough to eliminate most of those factors. And you're never going to throw it perfect every time, just like you're never going to go out and hit a perfect golf shot every time. I mean, you're going to have your bad days, your days you're off. You're just going to have your bad throws. You might have 10 good throws. You throw one bad throw, that's the seven out. You also might have a good throw that you felt good about that sevens out. It's not like you're always going to seven out eventually. Oh, that's off the table. If you heard it hit here, that means it would have been off the table. Landed that a little too far, had too much arc. But what you're trying to do is just eliminate as many negative factors as you can and influence them in a way that you're going to avoid the seven. I mean, and then if you practice enough, like I'll tell you, the stuff under the felt right now is one, one eighth inch single cell foam, which gets it pretty pretty close to what the casino has. And I use there's a thin layer on top of it because when I just used that in the felt, it was more bouncy than any table I've ever played on. So I took a very thin layer of this plastic. I don't even know what the exact name of this plastic is. It was just something I had in the basement and put over it. And now it bounces a lot like bouncy tables at the casino. We got a five, four, nine. And if you've noticed, I've now rolled four, or four nines four nines, three of them have been five four. I mean, I know you can only roll six three or five four, but that's some of those replicating results I'm talking about. Um, I'm, I'm throwing a lot in the same way, landing in the same spot. I'm seeing a lot of the same numbers and in the same combination. We got a five six yo. I'm throwing three yo's now. on three yo's like I said um, but yeah this is more just more so than dice control it's seven avoidance and if you practice enough you're going to notice a lot of the numbers that you throw coming up multiple times like this throw for me 
is a field killer and right now I've got four nines and three three yos and and that's a seven out. I almost said it as I threw it. I landed that short. And that's the shit that happens. I mean, you can have one bad throw, and that's the end of it. Um, and it wasn't even a horrible throw, but it, I knew I released it a little early. Um, but, see, I, I mean, that's some of the... I want to show you the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm not going to sit here and wait until I get a 35 roll and record all night. I don't have time for that shit. I get off at 1 a.m. every night, or 12.30. 12.30 to 1 a.m., it depends. Um, we'll tally them up. I covered one number. Five. All right, nice little 10 roll. That's another common misconception is people think just because you claim to influence the dice you're going to roll 30 times every single time you step up that's not the case i mean your goal is just to get above the average the the margin of house edge is so slim in craps i mean it's what 0.41 percent if you're playing the pass line and odds i believe that if you get your average roll up to eight just eight up one and a half more than the than the average roll then you have a betting strategy that is conducive to making money in eight rolls, you can kill them, man. Like, you can put a lot of money out there. If you know you usually seven out at the eighth roll, you play a lot of money for six rolls and pull off. Pull off all of it or most of it. Like, if you know about when you seven out, you can pull all or most of your money off a couple rolls early. Because, yeah, you're going to have your bad rolls. You're going to have your real good rolls, but... If you throw enough, you're gonna know about what your average is. We got a six, four, 10. You're gonna know about what your average is. And once you know about what your average is, you wanna get off a little bit before. Cause if you just barely underperform, you're off. Or most of your money's off. You, don't, you might not wanna take it all off because the more you practice, you're gonna notice that you have longer rolls more often than most people now, and even longer than your average. So you might not wanna pull all your money off, but you don't wanna go headstrong, throw all your money down and just assume every time you roll, it's gonna be a huge roll because that will not happen um, every time. Right there, we got a hard eight. I don't mind them kissing like they just did there. Um, my other set I use with this throw is the hard way set. I actually don't like them kissing in the hard way set because I get a lot of four threes or five twos. When they kiss, they tend to double pitch. Um, with the 56-32, I don't mind it because a double pitch doesn't equal a seven out on this dice set. We got a six three nine, And I mean, if you notice, also, I've had a lot of sixes pop up, um, which could be, and most likely is, this five's just rolling over one. Um, but yeah, I had three O's last roll, I had a six four already this roll, I think I had a six deuce last roll. I mean, that's the stuff you start to notice. And I track most of my rolls too, like the amount of rolls I roll. Um, and once I get my SOR seven out ratio up to a number I'm comfortable with and I'm hitting it consistently with each throw, I'll start recording each throw, what each dice does as far as like five, three, eight, instead of just the, the number of rolls. But right now I'm only, I'm in my infancy. I'm, I'm only a couple months in. So right now I'm just trying to get my average rolls up. Once I get my average rolls up, to something I like and each I have multiple throws that I practice so I kind of know what each throws hitting already for a little bit what I want to go and get actual data of how often you're supposed to hit a number versus how often I'm hitting it with that throw 
and then I can, we got snake eyes, I can formulate my strategy around that, which I already have a lot of good strategies. Um, I hope you watched the last few videos and liked some of those. Um, but I can like cater it to each throw and each dice set even more so. So I might bet on a few numbers, but I know to go heavier on a, on a number or two than the other one because I know I hit it 50% of the time more than you're supposed to or whatever the case may be. I don't have those analytics yet, but my mind's very analytical. So we got a 314. I like that roll a lot. I hope you can see it from back there. But they hit off the wall. The one with the one just died. And then the three spun a couple times. But came to a rest pretty quick. And that's that's where you're on a bouncy table. That premier grip's just going to bounce all around. That's why you all these new throws are coming out. If you watch Bone Throw or Dangerous Arm Craps, they got tons of throws. And it mitigates that bounce. Which really is what you want because the more it bounces and rolls the more chance to randomize it has we got a three two five so and like i said if you don't believe in dice influencing then i'm not going to be the guy that proves it to you um I'm, young, I'm in my infancy in it, and if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. I mean, there's a reason they added bouncy tables. They do let you dice control, but they want you to think that you can because it creates interest in dice. We got a yo. Because any old Joe Schmo can go watch any dice control video on YouTube and see that the grip's pretty easy, the pendulum throws pretty easy, you just dice set it to the hard ways and think that they're actually gaining an advantage, which in turn creates more interest in dice, which in turn for the casino makes them more money. The more people that think they can do it, the more interest in dice, the more money the casino is going to generate. So they don't mind you trying it. They don't, that's why, the, I mean, they let you set the dice, but they've done stuff like with the, with the gator, the adding the bouncy tables, they, they obviously believe and know that it's a thing. That's why the, the Dominators and Scoobletties of the world haven't been able to play. They can't get on the table anymore. Six, deuce, eight. Because they've taken them for so much money over time. That's why now they resort to writing books and selling you these systems, and they're still selling the Premier Grip, which doesn't really work on a bouncy table now if you practice it on a hard table and you got hard tables in your casino or you find a place with a hard table yeah it still works but I practice with bouncy tables because the casinos in my area are all relatively new with built within the last six to eight years so they're all built with newer tables these bouncier tables and going from shooting like See, that's something that I don't like. It actually worked out fine, 314. But if that was a hard table, that roll probably would have been all right. But, I mean, you want to practice on as close to what you're going to be using as possible. It's just like you want to practice how you play. You want to practice the conditions you're going to play in. Um, for the for the sake of the video, I won't do it, but usually I'll have music on, um, maybe get a couple distractions going, and I want to be able to channel my focus just like I do in golf, just like I do in basketball. And I like this. I think throwing dice is a lot like a chip shot because it takes finesse. Um, you, you stare at your landing spot. like, and you Obviously, when you're chipping, you're not looking at your landing spot when you're about to hit it but you focus in where you want to land the ball. Um, some people do the pendulum swing, which is like a chip shot, it takes finesse. I'm not a big pendulum swing guy for the simple fact the more I move, the more room for variation, I feel like. But I'm basically doing from contact to follow through of a chip shot. Now, like I said, you can, you can pendulum and if it feels comfortable for you and you can hit the same spot, go ahead and do it. 
but that's not my cup of tea. I don't. I'm just not great at doing that for whatever reason. Or at, maybe I, I mean I'm all right at it, but I'm definitely better just going straight from it. We got another yo. So I've hit five yos in two rolls so far. Last roll, I rolled a little ten banger, hit three yos, hit two yos already here. And I mean, that's, if that doesn't show you, I mean, granted it's on a small scale, small sample size, but I've hit five yos in probably 20 throws. So a quarter of the time, like, that's way past, you got a, what, one in 18 chance of rolling an 11, and I've rolled it a quarter of the time. That's the type of data I want to get also. Like, just, just throwing dice and practicing will definitely help. But if you can analyze it to the numbers that you hit <coughs> and find out what you hit way more often than you should, that's where you make the real money. We got a four deuce six. But that's where the real money comes in. Let's see how much time we got. 21? All right. Um, because you know what to bet. Like... I could be sitting here throwing five dollars every single time on the 11 and if I hit it four out of 20 times I mean it's a one in 15 so if I'm hitting it a quarter of the time you know what I mean I'm making bank I'm making three quarters all right so if I hit it a quarter if I hit a five dollar yo and I hit it one out of every four times or even one out, if I hit it one out every five times, I pay 25 bucks, but I make 75. $50 profit, and then if I, you know what I mean? So that's $50 that I keep hitting one in every four rolls. I mean, or you bet the field, and I've been hitting a lot of field numbers, you know what I mean? So every time you hit that 11, you're getting paid on it. But it encompasses more numbers. So that's the type of stuff you look for. And we get we sevened out five deuce. So we didn't even cover a number, but we got five, ten, eleven. So alright. So I just got off work, first couple throws of the night. I got a 10 and 11. Now, the people that don't believe in dice influencing or whatever, they're going to be like, yeah, anyone can roll 10 and 11 times in a row, which is true. But like I said, I'm showing you the good, the bad, the ugly. I could sit here, which I won't do. I don't have the time for that shit. But I could sit here recording video after video until I get a nice roll of, of 25 or whatever. Because, I mean, I guarantee you by the end of the night, I'm going to have a couple rolls that are anywhere from... 25 to 35 or I mean if I my best so far is 46 but um with this roll but like I don't have time to just keep making video after video and try to remember what I was talking about you know what I mean I want to show you the good the bad the ugly and right now those are two good throws I could have made money on um I wouldn't have got rich but if I know I can go up and throw 10 rolls every single time because I rolled a 10 and 11 and I can hit a, a yo a quarter of the time you know what I mean I can go create a betting strategy for eight rolls and I bet on the yo eight times if I hit it twice boom that's a hundred bucks plus I covered I think two numbers the first time I don't think I covered a number there but hit those odds um, hit a like maybe I'm, I hit a lot of hard sixes and eights I hit a hard eight there I didn't hit a hard six I bet on the hard eight, throw five bucks at it. I hit two eights, one of them was hard, one of them wasn't, that's another 45. You know what I mean? Like, I just wanna get a lot of long-term data to where I see the percentages for each roll after I get an SOR that I'm comfortable with. And then, and I'll just show you how bouncy this table is too. I mean, that's just throwing it from five feet. Um, But yeah, like, and you can hear it. You can hear the padding a little bit. But yeah, I just want to get one to where I get an SOR that I'm comfortable with. Like, I want to get around, I want to get to about 15. If I can 
get most of three out of four of my rolls to 15 average or whatever like three out of four times i'm hitting around 15 then i can develop another strategy but for now i just want to get up to that point or close to it and then i'll start really analyzing data because if i analyze it now before i or if i start writing all this shit down now before i get up to my like sor and maybe the throw changes slightly maybe i change make one small adjustment and the numbers start to change then it's going to skew my results so once i get this throw 100 percent locked in i've only been practicing it for about a week now once i get it 100 percent locked in that's when i'll start taking down exactly what i'm throwing the six two eight the the six three nine the five four nine whatever i'll start writing down exactly every number i'm hitting so i can see what pops up more often than not and like if you want to practice get some single cell foam or get some spandex type shit and put it under put it on a, a table you can hear the difference and um or if you have a hard top tables you don't even have to worry about it but like with the hard top tables you can land the shit and it doesn't really even bounce it'll hit this bottom of the gator and it really isn't doing much other than just coming back down and stopping so you get skewed results from when you go to a hard table to a bouncy table you get on a bouncy table you're you're in a whole new world you know what i mean it's nothing like what you've practiced and if you're going to a new newer casino most of the time you're going to be at a bouncy table so why practice hard and then get good at the hard table you get the bouncy and none of your throws work you know what i mean i'd rather go on bouncy because when you get to that hard table you're going from shooting a free throw to a layup as opposed to when you go from hard to bouncy you go from shooting a free throw to a half quarter you know what i mean i'd rather practice on the hardest shit so when i get to well the saw the bouncy but you i'd rather practice harder in a harder scenario than i'm going to be in or harder to or equal to practice how you play type stuff i don't want to i don't want the easy practice and make myself think I'm better than I am. That's the most dangerous thing to do is to think that you're better than you are because if you do, you're just gonna go lose a bunch of money. You know what I mean? But yeah, I hope you liked it. A little 10 and 11 roll, nothing special, but definitely something you can make money off. I'm not sitting here claiming to be bone thrower or dangerous arm. I do hope to get that good one day, but you know, I'm, I've been doing it a couple months with the bouncy table. And, I mean, look, dude, I'm no fucking carpenter either. This is just a old ping pong table. And I made it in all in a day. Go buy, I bought this ping pong table years ago for 25 bucks. 50 bucks, I, I think it was 25. And then I put all this together for another, I think 60, 70 bucks. So a hundred bucks, you can make pretty much exactly your own own table. The stuff under here is one eighth single cell foam, and I mean you can have a pretty legit table for a hundred bucks and a day's worth of work. So, I mean, yeah, let me know what you think. Comments, concerns, bitches, gripes, complaints, any of that. I'll I'll get to them. I'll answer them. I'm open to skepticism. Um, and I haven't, I mean, obviously two rolls isn't going to prove anything to you guys, but just wanted to open your mind and get other people's ideas on what they think about it. Or if they got anything they can tell me to help me out, I'd like to listen too. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll put some uh, strategy videos out either tomorrow or the next day, depending on what time I get off and how tired I am. But uh, um, I'm going to start doing some other strategies rather than the don't pass. I'll probably do some strategies some variances in strategy like take the iron cross and show you a variance or like a variable or variation of it stuff like that like but i'll get off the don't pass strategies for a while i wanted to get a couple of those out there because i feel like they're underrepresented but yeah i mean i hope you liked it guys it's double d dice say hello to my little friends.